Delighted to say that uh, one of the dark backroom staff, Shane Keegan, joins us on the line. Morning to you, Shane. You're back in the last couple of hours, I believe. Sorry? You're back home in the last couple of hours? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, In the door about about half an hour now, I'd say, at this stage. Um, So I am. So uh, a long night of travelling. Yeah, we can see we can see a five year old here whose uh, father has been away for three days as well. So uh, we'll just have to deal with him, I'm afraid. <laughs> I feel your, I feel your pain in that front. Um, <laughs> what what's the what's the overriding sense this morning? Like obviously, job done last night couldn't have been more dramatic. Ah, uh, listen, what a night! It was just absolutely incredible, really, Adrian. To be honest with you, um, look. It was a terrific performance. I was listening to yourself and own own chat there be, be, before you came across to me, and um, yeah, I think we did make them look ordinary. But but trust me, haven't been haven't been immersed in them for the last week. They're they're really anything but ordinary. They really really are, and it's it's an absolute credit to the lads that you can, you know, that that somebody watching them for the first time last night would have thought, ah, these are these are only bang average, and and, and Dundalk are well able for them. I mean, they've, they've they've got a couple of players that the forward Castaneda is likely to move to one of the bigger clubs very very soon. Um, their left back Cristiano is another one who's who's probably running out of time there. Probably likely to end up at, at one of the bigger European clubs fairly shortly. But but all over the field, I mean, they've won 19 of the last 20 titles um, in their own country, which I suppose can be a hindrance as much as a help maybe in in that sense. But. Uh, Look, it was a huge task. Yes, it was one that we thought was winnable and uh, there was an element of of luck to the drawing that you could have got a really, really tough one. Um, it was one that we thought was, was doable and, and look, it panned out that way, but only because of the absolutely colossal effort of the players last night. Yeah, the, the, you'd obviously a poor start to it. I came in after about a half an hour and um, the, the poor start was conceded in the first 10 minutes. Shane, was it like how much does that alter the, the thinking of the management team at that point? Are you thinking, listen, let's just stick to our guns. We have them here, we can grind them out. Or or given the nature of the dynamic of the game, you don't get that return leg. It's all going to be won and lost on the night. Does it dictate a bit of a change of approach? Well, I think what what's normally the case uh, very much, Adrian, is you, you see how the next 10 minutes go. And thankfully, the next 10 to 15 minutes for us were absolutely brilliant. Um, it was a really, really, really terrific response. You couldn't have asked for any better. I mean, the big boy who got the goal, he 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 hadn't kicked the ball this year. He, he'd been out for, for nearly six months and, and they fed him back into the into the team for the last half an hour of their game last Friday night. He would be their most experienced player. He has 60, 70 odd caps for Moldova. Um, and he's a big, big boy. I think he was around 6'3", 6'4", and he just got a little bit of a run on guards and it was a great delivery and a great header. But the response was was just terrific. I thought we absolutely bossed the next 15, 20 minutes. So uh, they certainly didn't press any 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 panic buttons, which was brilliant to see. Yeah, I, like was there a conversely, and was there a bit of frustration almost Shane, at times because like it did feel as if you were all you were the ones playing all the football, creating some chances. Maybe you might have liked them to be more uh, quality chances that than you did create. But certainly the team playing all the football and looked like the most likely to score. Like I mean, even deep into. Um, at a time at the end of the game was like was it getting frustrating at that point that you weren't able to convert that? Yeah, I suppose it was. But in saying that, you know, didn't the goals come at an absolutely fantastic time then? In that sense, because you know you're now you're walking back into the dressing room and there are smiles on faces and you know you can talk about opposition and you can talk about how much you think you'll be able for the opposition, but until you go out there and experience it you know, you're you're never really 100% sure. We were able to walk back into that dressing room at half time and, and have a chat knowing there's nothing to fear here, lads. There's nothing to fear. We are absolutely good enough to, to get something from this. Um, and we kicked on again in the second half. Now, look, they, they, they were a good side and they did have periods. You know, there, there was a times where they, they played some lovely, very, very nice football. And, you know, we did have to soak up a bit of pressure at times. All right. But um, by and large, I think, you know, I think anybody would say we were we were full value. Look, penalties are penalties, all right. But I think you know it wouldn't have even have been a surprise, as you say, had we we gone and won the game. I thought Michael Duffy was given an absolute, you know, torture down on his flank. Pat, you know, I spoke to Pat Hoban after the game last night, and I said, "Look, you're a centre forward. You'll probably disagree with me, and you'll probably point to some game where you scored three or four goals in one game." But I honestly believe that was one of the best games Pat Hoban has ever had in his life. I thought he was a colossus. Absolute colossus. He bullied the life out of centre halves. He, you know, he stopped them from playing. He completely disrupted their rhythm. He, he was outstanding. But look, there were, you know, there were serious performances like that all over the field. Mm. And they got. He, he was one of the ones that got kicked up and down the field as well. They were very physical. Were you expecting that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they have a massive turnover in players, Adrian. They only have four players there from last year's European campaign. And from looking back a bit at last year's compared to this year's, I think they looked at last year's team and saw them as a oh, great domestic side who play lovely flowing football, but you know weren't up to the test in, in Europe. So they kind of threw all them out and cast them all aside and brought in big, strong, physical boys who uh, they obviously felt were a bit more equipped to, to, to European football. And yeah, we, we, we knew that uh, we knew that the style was going to be fairly aggressive, all right, yeah. Yeah, the the quality of penalties in the end, we were saying at the top of the show there, Shane, was like uh, incredible from a Dundalk point of view, the confidence and the composure nearly to slot them away. From your own point of view, because you're the opposition analyst with Dundalk, what, what sort of preparation were you able to do for that? If any, yeah. Well, look, I suppose there's 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 preparing your own side of it, and then there's preparing the opposition side of it. Um, there was quite a bit on Y Scout in terms of of penalty takers for them. Um, so between I suppose myself, um, Willow, Steve Williams, who's our goalkeeping coach, and and all three goalkeepers, um, Gary would be very proactive in that sense. He he would always you know make sure you know he'd be on to me to try and have the information. I think we sat through all their penalties twice actually. We sat through them. Yeah, we did. We sat through them Wednesday, and then we sat through them again on Thursday. Just myself, Willow, and 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 the three keepers. Um, so we did. So we had quite a bit done on it. Look, that said, we'd seen seven of their players take a penalty. The one Gary saved saved was from Obelar. We had never seen Obelar take a penalty, um, <laughs> which of course shows all all preparation. But uh, we had a had a bit of a scheme going there, all right. Where the ones who we had seen taking penalties before. Willow had an arrangement with uh, with Gary that he'd hold two cones and he'd hold up one colour if, if that player usually struck right and hold up a different colour if he usually struck left. So we tried to cover all bases, but as I say, at the end of the day, I uh, you know he saved a penalty from a guy that we'd never seen take a penalty before. And um, look, it was brilliant. Uh, you might have seen on social media, Gary 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 turned 39 just after midnight um, there, so he did. So it's absolutely incredible feat by himself. Dan Cleary was calling him Benjamin Button in the bus on the way back, um, and he's he's certainly that. He's just getting just getting better, and it was a terrific save. Is that all you can do with penalties, Shane? Is that like like getting into the minutiae of like it's you know you see the um, the tracker when you're watching Premier League games or whatever that such a player has gone to these specific positions? Can you get that detailed, or is it? Is it too vague at that point in terms of like a player's capability to actually repeat uh, what they've done before, or just the vagaries of everything? It's look, it's left or right, and that's what you stick with. I, I think Adrian, I, I got a bit of a, an, it was a bit of a, a learning experience for me actually watching how Gary goes about analysing it. Because look, if, if a guy has only ever taken one in a previous penalty shootout, well then you know there's very very that's probably a guessing game, all right. But if he's a guy who's a regular penalty taker, so they had. They had two guys last night who were regular penalty takers. They'd signed a guy called Kapic, who was taking him at his previous club. So we were able to look at a good few of his. But it, the particular one, the, the guy Castaneda, again, that centre forward, um, he was taken to, had, had, had taken an awful lot. I think we had maybe eight, nine penalties of Castaneda. And to me, it's just, do they go left or do they go right? But to Gary, it's it's, it's far, far more. He He's looking at the shape of their body when he's running up. And and he it, what he said to me was com- made absolute complete sense. Um, if Castaneda stepped up towards the ball slowly as he approached, he always put it to the right. If he stepped up a little bit quicker, ran up to it a bit quicker, he was putting it left. Um, so he was able to judge by the speed of the approach as to whether he'd go go left or right. But um, look, again, all that comes with the caveat that uh, I don't know if, if that had a whole lot to do with, with the one he saved. Yeah, it sounds great when you won. It's like, oh, we've we <laughs> we planned this it. thing out to a T. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but as you say, the, the quality of our own penalties. I mean, when you think about the the the, the slog of the hundred and twenty minutes that they'd gone through was 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 absolutely superb. Like the, you know, you felt for their keeper. He had absolutely no chance whatsoever. And even with independent takers, Adrian, you know, a couple of couple of of, of great stories with independent takers in that. Patrick McElhenney, I mean Patrick's um, Patrick's partner was induced on Monday, um, so he had his, his he had his first child, a, a baby boy on Monday, which went great, and obviously they had to, to try and make that happen on Monday so that he could be on the flight to fly out on Tuesday. Um, wasn't quite ready for a start. Look, I, I would argue Patrick is is you know pretty much the best attacking midfielder in in the league of Ireland, but. Uh, just coming back from injury, wasn't quite ready for a start, but we knew he'd be a fantastic weapon to bring in as the game went on, and and so it transpired. And his his penalty was brilliant. But uh, I think the real the real real one was was Chris Shields. I mean Shieldsy 
I don't know if, if too many people knew from watching the stream, but Shieldsy could have had his gas a moment. Shieldsy picked up a yellow card, which puts him out of next Thursday night, which is absolutely gut wrenching for him. You know, absolutely gut wrenching, and you could see it in his body language. He 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 probably did struggle for maybe near enough the next five minutes. He kept walking around the field, shaking his head and putting his hands in the, on on his face and that. Um, but he shook it out of his system. Then he shook it out of his system. He was absolutely fantastic for the rest of the game and. What a winning penalty! You know he he was a real a real real warrior in 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 circumstances last night. You know, uh, Shane, can you tell us a little bit about what your week looked like in the build up to the game last night? So you, you talked to us about the video analysis for the penalties, but overall, uh, how early do you get the footage? How much work are you doing, and how many hours have you spent pouring over all the video you have? Yeah, look, it's it's very intensive already, right, and so it is. Um, look, we're we're blessed with with the technology now. There's I suppose there's two providers, Y Scout and Instat. Um, we're with Y Scout at the moment, and yeah, look, every every game that they have played in the last couple of years is up there for me. Every game is tagged, so you can, you know, just put in your particular search parameters, and it brings it all up. And um, yeah, I suppose there was a difference because obviously I started the role under under Vinny, and now I'm doing it under Philippe. And there is a different way in which the two of them wanted to go about it. I suppose on the Sunday, the Sunday leading into a Thursday night game. Um, previously, we would have done a kind of a huge download of information and given the lads a massive amount of information really early in the week so that they could kind of have an early picture of what was going on. Filippo wanted it done slightly differently where we'd kind of drip feed it as the week went on. So, you know, rather than building up to the Celia game, I think we did like pretty much an all day or where we kind of interspersed training sessions with video and the boys were in maybe at 10 o'clock that morning and didn't leave until five in the evening between the various different things we were doing. Um, with Filippo, it was, no, we'll do a half an hour on them on Sunday, a half an hour on the Monday, half an hour on the Tuesday. And basically, we did a half an hour each day um, in terms of looking at, you know, them with the ball, them without the ball, you know, set pieces, counterattacks. We'd have a different team to each day. Um, and you're just, all you can do, I mean, again, you know, there's no exact science to it. All you're trying to do is just paint a couple of, of, of pictures for the lads based on particular teams um, as I say, look, we, we we focused on their attack and threat down the left quite a lot, which is is why um, you know people may have been surprised to see us fielding Sean Gannon on, on the right of midfield. Sean didn't last too long, unfortunately, but but even then we brought in John Mountney, who'd you know Sean John has great attacking quality, but but it's his work rate, and we knew he'd be able to shut down that that left back for us, and he he did so. So just trying to be you know trying to find as, as many areas of strengths that you can plan against and then more importantly going after a couple of, of, of areas of weakness that you think you can target and you're painting pictures for lads and it's up to lads then to see if they can take advantage of that. How satisfying is it when you spot something in video analysis and it actually comes off on the pitch? Yeah, yeah, very, very much so I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. Um, look, I don't think it's, uh, as I say, I don't think it has a massive, massive bearing on things. It's just... You know, it's another one of those boxes that needs to be ticked. And it's almost a mental thing as much as anything. Because the players are walking onto the field feeling, feeling we've done our homework. We know what we need to know. Um, and we've, we've done our preparation properly. And that that puts you in a, in a good place to believe that you're going to walk out onto the pitch and, and deliver your best. Um, and that's nearly as, uh, the most important part of it, is that the players feel happy. You mentioned there that uh, Filippo wanted a little bit of a change in terms of how he used the video analysis that you were doing. What else has he changed? What else has he brought to the club that represents his own stamp on football? Yeah, he's look, he's uh, he's been a very, very impressive guy. Um, I mean, me the same as as any of the uh, anybody else knew little to nothing of him when he arrived in. But I suppose you know there was a lot of talk and and kind of uh, at the time and 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 you know a lot of question marks. But at the end of the day, lads, like it's very rare. When somebody is pulled out of nowhere like that, like they have to have something about them. Like they must have impressed somebody somewhere along the line that they've been pulled out of out of nowhere. And and that's very much been the case. Um, you would not know for one minute that this is 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 this guy's first time operating at this level because right. he's 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 very methodical. He's very very. Uh, what I like is he's very very sure of himself in that he knows what he wants. Um, you know, I've been trying to be thinking. I know my first year or two in management, I was, you know, I was kind of second guessing myself the whole time. So I was, he doesn't second guess himself. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll ask, say, if, take me, for example, he'll ask for my opinion on stuff. He'll want a huge amount of input for me. Um, you know, we'll have numerous, numerous conversations. 
you know, but there's only one man making the decision at the end of the day, and he'll make it with 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 real real conviction. So he will, and that's been very very impressive. The other thing, I suppose, with himself and and Giuseppe, who's come with him, and not to play too much into the Italian stereotype, but by God, do they wear their heart on their sleeve? They're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, they're they're uh, yeah yeah they're they're leaping and they're jumping and they're roaring and they're shouting and and there's great crack to be knocked out of the two of them. So there is in that sense. But the boys love that. The boys really really feed off of that. So they do. Um, so look, they've they've had a, a, a massive positive impact. Look, I, I heard you talking again before about the dressing room, and you're right. It is a fantastic dressing room. It is a really, really fantastic dressing room. When you look at Gary Rogers, Brian Gartling, Chris Shields, fellas like that, um, you know, there's real, real, real leadership in there. And so they were they were coming into a good setup. They knew, you know, they were coming into a good setup. They they never they were never gonna have to to change the whole world really, so they weren't. Um things had had, you know, the look had just started to go against Vinny a little bit and, and different things had gone against him and the boys have come in at a good time. There's been a little bit of element of a look, obviously, in terms of, of the draw and all that. But they've, they've been really, really impressive. And, uh, you know, you've heard the players singing their praises. And um, look, long may it continue. When he said they wear their heart in their sleeve, have we got some Al Pacino dressing room motivational speech moments yet? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, whatever about in the dressing room, it's it's in the dugout is an experience to, <laughs> to be beside the two of them because... Uh, yeah, Giuseppe in particular, if, if something goes against Giuseppe, you'll hear uh, at the top of his voice, you'll instantly get the Mamma Mia! And, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll repeat it three or four times as well after that. So we we, uh, we regularly shout that at him anyway. So we do, although I was the one getting the piss taken out of me last night because I was the one who ended up with the yellow card on the bench. So for all, <laughs> for all we talk about of them being the ones that, that, that get emotional about things. But... Uh, I no, saw that. What, uh, happened, what uh, happened there, Shane? Um, ah, nothing. Very, very little, really. Posmak, the big, the big brute of a centre half who 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 got the goal. Um, he was booked early in the game, and he hit. He 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 now hit. Uh, he he made three fouls after the yellow card, and that's, that's very rare. You see a, a player still on the field after making three fouls after a yellow card, and I was just trying to uh, inform the referee in case he wasn't keeping the tally that I was keeping, just how many fouls he'd made since the yellow, but. He marched across to me and uh, produced the yellow and pointed to the word respect on the badge on, on his sleeve. Put me in my place fairly quickly. <laughs> uh, just one last one then on, on the management. It, it does go to show what you're saying there, that no matter what sort of leadership role you're in, being unbelievably confident in yourself to the point of being pig-headed at times is almost a necessary step. But like Whenever you hear any manager talking about a refereeing decision or defending a player, there is a siege mentality that has to exist, it seems. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And uh, look, I suppose, like Everton again, Owen, it, it kind of it goes with the results, really, so it does. You know, if, if, if you've been pig-headed and results are going well, well, then the pig-headedness is what's getting you the results. If sure. you've been pig-headed and the results are going against you, you know, it's, it's, it's looked on in a very, very different way. But, yeah, look, as I say, he's, I, I, I do like that, that strength of conviction he has in, in his decision-making. Um, you know, I might sit down with him and we might start talking about a particular player in a particular position and he'll, he'll tell me he's thinking of going with such a guy and... I'll give 15, 20 minutes maybe arguing for a different uh, a different guy and he'll nod and he'll smile and at the end of the 15, 20 minutes we'll go with the one <laughs> we'll go with the one that he was going with in the first yeah. place and and he's right because he's the one who's ultimately going to going to live and die by it. Um, but yeah, I think the boys you know the boys get the vibe of that confidence from him as well and look the only way he could come in from where he's come from and and do the role as well as he's done is to have that strength of conviction and confidence in himself. Yeah, and it, from your own point of view, Shane, what do you what do you see ahead? Like he's spoken very well about you as well, and he wants you very much involved. And you're the one, you're the adult in the room by all accounts with the the uh, pro license. Um, <laughs> what's the what's the future for you? Are you happy enough with what, with the role you're doing at the minute? Has it been increased since the lads have come yeah. in, or what do you see? What do you see ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's been very much in increased, and that's just because you know Vinny had a team and Vinny had people who were fulfilling certain roles. Whereas obviously Filippo's come in and he's he's only had Giuseppe with him, so he's needed somebody to be a bit more uh, a bit more hands on in terms of you know being involved in the training sessions a bit more. Um, certainly in terms of, of of talking about tactics and 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 starting lineups and and how we're going to go about things and all that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I am a, a lot more involved. As I say, that's not that, that, that Vinny was purposely keeping me on the sidelines or anything. It was just that, that there were specific people he had. He had John Gill and he had Alan Reynolds, whereas, um, 
yeah, there's a bit more involvement for me. So naturally enough, look, when you're more involved in something, you you tend to enjoy it that bit more. And we have a good relationship with them. The players, as I say, you know, if got probably incredibly close to, to, to a couple of the players very, very quickly. There's there's some serious, seriously impressive characters in there. There really, really is. So at the moment, look, loving it. But, uh, you know, a few hours after what's been a fantastic night, you know, I'm bound to be loving it all right, really, aren't I? Yeah, well, you're not going to get too much time to enjoy Rovers on Sunday and then Glasgow at... Um the Aviva next week and everybody's already saying sure listen it's grand they pulled off like an unbelievable job last night that was their final and it's going to be very straightforward now next week yeah you'd like to think it's all just going to roll like that all right Adrian wouldn't you um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, why, why, Scout, yeah. why Scout is going to get hit hard today I presume why, why Scout is going to get absolutely hammered so it is yeah that's for <laughs> sure um, look it was an unbelievable result for them last night it really really was I, I we were <laughs> We we weren't able we weren't able to turn on our, our data roaming over there last night because they, we I think we got text to tell us all we'd spent a hundred euro within five minutes of landing on the plane really so we had so I've really only since I got to the country been able to 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 start googling a few bits and pieces and um, it doesn't seem to have been that scoreline last night doesn't seem to have been a one off believe it or not if you have a look there in the month of in the month of August uh, they won three games six nil five nil and seven nil. Um, so they certainly know, they absolutely know where the back of the net is. That's that's for sure. Throwing th- those three results along with what they achieved last night, it's definitely, definitely going to be, be no work in the, uh, walk in the park. But look, we will. We'll do a hell of a lot of homework. We might have to get on to, might have to get on to Brian Kerr. Obviously, <laughs> Brian was, mm. was out in that direction for a while and see if Brian has any tidbits for us as well. Um, look, the game in between is not ideal. That's for sure. There's no point in saying any differently. Um really really not ideal really from our perspective because we've got into a fantastic cycle now of what you do from thursday to thursday to get ready for a game um but we haven't is it had too late a game to get it pulled? In sorry is it too late to get it pulled oh look there's no doubt we'd love to have it pulled absolutely no doubt whether that can still be achieved or not i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but Look, it would be brilliant. It would be brilliant to think that that the league or or even Shamrock Rovers themselves. Look, I know there's a serious rivalry between the two clubs. We've been they've been hammering tongs for the last few years, but you know there may even be a, a you know there may even be a, some bit of grace given by Rovers that they might say, look, you know it was a fantastic result. Because let's be honest, while we knew we had a chance last night, I think the League of Ireland, those making decisions, were probably making the, doing the time schedule based on the likelihood that we might lose. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there is any room to to, to change it. Look, the travelling. When you think about the amount of travelling we did, here's another here's another one for you, actually, Adrian. Uh, this club, like their 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 facilities were absolutely incredible. Their their money is the money involved in the mm-hmm. club is colossal, colossal. As we were trying to leave the grounds last night, we were delayed at a barrier for a half an hour because the sheriff's staff were insistent that they were short two towels which they had supplied to us and were refusing to allow us to leave the grounds until these two towels were given back to them. Uh, so so that, <laughs> that added that added to our trek home. We were already a half an hour behind behind schedule based on that. So we were, I just thought that was absolute madness, really. So it was, but um, was yeah, look, yeah, look. Um, are you, are you going to stick them in the know, wash Mark, now in the next couple of hours? <laughs> Martin Connolly, who's a, who's a, who's the general manager, managed to somehow eventually get them to lift the feckin' barrier and, and allow Absolutely. us out. So they did. But um, yeah. yeah, no. Look, we'll see what happens with Sunday. I, I look. There, there's absolutely no way whatsoever that those who who went through what they went through last night and are going to be asked to do the same next Thursday, they they can't feature. They quite simply can't feature. Um, so I, 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 you know, if if the game goes ahead, which at the moment it is going ahead, there's there's going to have to be a hell of a lot of changes made. That it that is for sure because. Uh, Look, I don't know if I'm allowed, if you're supposed to be saying it or not supposed to be saying it, but it does look like Rovers have this in the bag. So, so you know, we have to realise where our priorities are and 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 work accordingly. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, Dundalk have a long history with towels anyway, haven't they? So that's um, probably appropriate. Last night that you got you got the lead there, Shane. Good man. Listen, we really appreciate it. I know you're under the pre- under pressure there as well with uh, with everything in the home run too. So we really pr- appreciate <laughs> you taking the time. Well done last night, and uh, hopefully we'll be speaking to you again uh, next Friday morning in similar circumstances. Here's that.